Okay. Okay. So we will I'll call the meeting back to order, and now we're in the um, town office meeting room, and um, it is now 6:35. So first on the agenda would be um, public comment. Who wants to go first? Steve? Oh, I just said, who wants to go first? So this is, oh. For public comment. For public comment. Okay. Um, I guess I'm here because um, I sent you guys a letter about possible, the potential ATV ordinance that you're talking about, and just want to make sure that you got it. And yeah. um, have you read it? I, I have. Um, and so I think that says everything that um, I think I feel very strongly that you should not allow ATVs on any roads in Moortown. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but it's as far as I'm concerned, it's totally incompatible with our town plan and it's not compatible with um, motor vehicle safety. So I think my letter that I sent says it all. So okay. I'd like that to be in your records. Sasha, do you have copies of those letters? Or are they in our packet here? They, no, I did not bring them out. I okay. And, you know, uh, I'd like to talk more about it. Like, you know, if you have it down in this old business. Right, I mean, that's fine. Again, uh, yeah. I would like to discuss it more um, at, at old business time. Or if you want to, um, you know, if that is, that's fine. Yeah. But, I, I think, you know, the people all heard the same thing. Okay. Yeah. No, I'd like to discuss it. Yeah, more. we de definitely want to discuss that more. Yeah. Okay. We couldn't do it now to make it so they, they you know, do that old business item now. So yeah, I mean, it's old now. business pending. So, I mean, and, and if, uh, it's up entirely up to you if we want yeah, to talk about it now. If Joe, if Joe Gabri is not coming, then we have, we have some extra time. So. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I mean, wouldn't the other people coming because it's later in the agenda? And then what? Now, with the, the, the uh, for the ATV ordinance, that's just under old business pending, right. but it's it's not on the actual agenda. See what happens usually with old business okay. is we we go down to the what's what's basically meeting after meeting after meeting. It's the same old business that's there, okay. just to see if there's any updates on it. And right. I know that um, both Kylie and Ray were doing some other work on the ordinance since our last meeting, so. Um, so let's just let's just talk about it now since you're all everybody's here. Yeah. So actually, do we want to hear maybe the next really from like what are you folks thinking? I'm kind of in shock I, actually. That I think you should hear. Considered, but, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, because I went to the select board meeting and I was like, oh, it doesn't you know it doesn't say anything. So I, was, I part of the reason I'm here is just to find out what you guys are thinking. Yeah. So you want me? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think the majority of the reason is up until this spring, um, the state had it, as I understand, that ATVs could be on class four roads. And that's how it was. It was a state rule. The town had, in essence, allowed that. And the state has since changed where they are, how they are doing that. So it became basically the town putting in an ordinance for them to do that. So, anybody else want to have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, the interpretation of the law is, is, not everybody agrees with that interpretation of the law. There has been legal. And we feel like an ordinance would, um, well, when, you, when you set up the ordinance, you're gonna have to post on the road, that ATVs can come here, and that's going to cause more traffic. I, I also wrote a letter. Is that in the past? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that the uh, increased traffic on the road would have an adverse impact on lots of things. 
I, I think we need to really stress here, though, um, I think you're misinterpreting state law. Um, and the reason the state, and I think I say it in my letter, it was badly, it was a badly edited state law. A lot of organizations disagree with that interpret, the interpretation of VASA that you could be on class four because they're not plowed. The intent of the law, really from the beginning, was to keep ATVs out of regular traffic. So to say you can ride on a class four unplowed road any time of year doesn't keep them out of traffic. They're not safe on public roads. They're not meant to be. They weren't designed and manufactured to be on public roads with regular traffic. So you can't say that you could drive on those class four roads during the summertime with all the other traffic that's on the road and say that that was legal in the past. It never was. So there's no reason to go actually make it legal now by the town. So right now, any vehicle, as long as it is registered and inspected, can go from Lynch Hill to Heron Brook. Any vehicle. As long as you have a registration, you've got a plate, and you have a sticker, any vehicle can do that on a class 4 road, as long as you're registered and inspected. Not ATVs. So... If we're talking about safety, knowing how wide that road is and all the blind corners on that road, I would honestly be more concerned about getting, meeting up with a truck with 37 inch tires and a 7, 8 inch lift in it than I would potentially an ATV. So I think that would be an argument then for gates. For trucks off the road. Exactly, and that's a majority of the problem up there is the trucks destroying private property. I think that's another whole issue. So and I think what the um, thing with the ATVs right now, they aren't legal. They've never been legal in, in traffic. They're really meant to be on public property. And I cited in the letter, the, uh, manu the ATV Manufacturers Association says they should never be on public roads. Right. They're meant for private property. Yep, they're, they're designed, not supposed to be, yeah. they're designed and manufactured for um, out of regular traffic. They don't meet federal motor vehicle standards. So I think the whole issue with all of the other problems that are out there is kind of different. And what we really don't want is, um, like I said before, there was an ordinance in the past um, to open the roads to ATVs. And it was a nightmare. Callie, you weren't living there, so you missed it. Um, but it, you guys remember that? it I was a member of We never did sign the ordinance. Yeah. It, it was like a temporary. It was never so it was like a temporary. We had talked about an ordinance. Yeah. We never passed an ordinance. So but everybody but, so you didn't even have to pass it and everybody believed that Moortown opened those roads. And it created a huge amount of traffic. It put us on the map. It it been, but that was but the, the map came out prematurely. It was not something that was authorized or right, so by the site board. But yeah. uh, uh, let me, can I just state where I'm coming from yeah. on this, okay? Because um, where I live, I see, I see all the ATVs. I see as many as you, I'm sure. Yeah. And my problem is I see unregistered, uh, uninsured, unhelmeted, people going right. by my house all the time. Yep. And my feeling is the only way we're going to get any type of control on this is to pass an ordinance and with some bite to it that will that we can enforce it and 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 keep myself and people that want to legally ride these roads uh, out there, you know, because I, I feel as a as citizen, a, as a taxpayer in Moortown, uh, these more, these class four roads and trails are part mine, like yours. Mm -hmm. And if I want to ride an ATV on them, respectively, uh, I, I should be able to do that. And there uh, there are a lot of people, residents in our neighborhood, our group, yep. that that drive like I do, respectfully and. I don't think we need to break the law to do that. And I'm trying to uh, work out some sort of solution to that end. How is an ordinance and putting this on paper going to protect us any more than all of the state law that's already on paper? 
There's all, all the unregistered vehicles that are coming out, the speeding, um, the running the other people off the road practically. That's all illegal as it is now. We don't need an ordinance to get control of that. What we need is law enforcement. Which and we don't, we, we, and you're, you're not going to have law enforcement. Where is the law enforcement going to come from? Uh, well, that's it. If, yeah. if we can, and, and this is an early stage of this, if we can get a license fee or some fees from the people that want to use these roads to offset the cost of the, uh, you know, the you're regulation. Yeah. You're going to charge people to come out and, and make it, basically it sounds like you want to have an ATV park out in the preserve area. Uh, no, but I don't know. Wait, can I, can I just speak? Can I, by fountain, it's a timber company. Wait, can I just say one thing? I, I think one thing that we should lose in this is that, and maybe the word ATV ordinance was the wrong word at this early stage. I think what Ray and Tally, when they started, we started talking about it uh, coming out of COVID into the summer, is they've been trying to just work on and do some brainstorming yes. on how to how to deal with this issue or this item so no it, it's not there's nothing in stone there's there's, nothing this, in stone, i think you need to have more people yeah no i mean i think this is the beginning of you know yeah some community engagement to talk about you know how this can be worked so how dealt with. Hard, not worked out. i mean i i'm not you know i'm not personally an atv user so and i you know i don't know anything about it but I know that we do have an issue, so it's good to try to work on it. I, I'd like to try to summarize a little bit what Deb is saying, though. And Ray, your comment was, we didn't even make an ordinance, and they put it on the map prematurely. What Deb is saying is, if you're making some sort of ordinance, you're putting it on the map, and you're going to attract people. So, so unless you have, if you want to make an ordinance with bite, that's great, but I don't know where the bite's going to come because the town has no teeth. Okay, and we've been dealing with this for as long as I've lived there. <laughs> Over you ten know. years, and we've never been. We call. We've got state police coming to meetings and saying, "We're not coming out there. We're not going to enforce it. The town won't provide any money for enforcement." I call up the state police and I say, "There's like three or four dirt bikes out here racing up and down the street. It's dangerous. Can you come out?" And I before the next kid gets killed, because we've already had a kid get killed. What do no, they that say? was a completely different situation. Wait, because wait. Malik was killed. We were there. On the corner, we on the blind there. corner. I don't care. We were there. We know what they were doing. My best friend died up there. That I, okay. On the opposite side of the road. Yeah. There has not been an ATV fatality on that road. What is right? And I know there hasn't because I called the state police today and I had them check. I'm and they stated that saying, there was no fatality. I never there. said it was an ATV fatality. What has brought yes, people, you, it's brought, what's brought people out there to be racing on the road, whether it's an ATV, a dirt bike, mud truck, anything else, is that there's no law enforcement. And the AP had at a meeting, I think it was about eight, ten years ago, we had a meeting about all that was going on, and the state trooper, the lieutenant from the barracks, head of the barracks, stands up in the meeting and tells everybody publicly, we are not coming out there and we're not going to force anything. So that's another issue. So it isn't that there's deaths by ATVs. It's the kind of behavior that's out there and that there's no law enforcement. And we haven't seen it. And there have. There's been, there's been two deaths. And another one was a kid with a skull fracture. And it's people coming out there because there's no law enforcement and they know it. So you have an ordinance that says, come on out, you're going to invite more people out there. It will be open to anybody who's an ATV, potentially. Or what people will hear is, more town has opened, opened its roads to ATVs and they don't read the rest of the ordinance. They're not going to read the rest of it. They're just going to come. And what was also stated previously was, is in teaming up what the state police recommended was teaming up with VASA because with VASA comes their own enforcement by a game warden, no. which can do that. If you go to VASA's website, they're actually encouraging people to come to Vermont and other states to use their trails. 
Yeah, yeah. So they have lots of trails have invested that interest on them. in increasing the traffic on their tracks. They want that. They're encouraging that. It's on their on their site, and then there are all sorts of subsidiary ATV clubs that are, are doing the same thing. Only they don't do it as as I don't have the right adjective. It, 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 lots of attempts to be responsible in their presentation of ATVs and some of the other clubs are less so. That's what works fine on private trails. They probably do a good job taking care of the Bassett trails on private property. Because ultimately, if a landowner doesn't know what, doesn't like what's going on, if there's bad behavior, boom, closed down overnight. The town's not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to control that. And I really don't think the town should secede their authority to a private organization that actually has a, a conflict of interest. I also don't think you should be doing anything to encourage um, increased traffic in the preserve, especially. I mean, on any more town road, but especially in the preserve district. It's been preserved, um, like I said, before we even moved here. And part of the preserve is discouraged development. Increased traffic is a big impact from development. It's a developmental impact without building a structure. So I don't know why if you want, we have preserved zones to protect the environment, to protect a peaceful environment for the people who live there. Why would you create a situation where you're going to invite ATV traffic, dirt bike traffic, and along with them ends up coming even more mutters. That's have you read about the forestries ad for their land up there? Okay. Yeah, I know they're selling it. What? Have you read their ad though? It doesn't matter. It does matter because in their ad, they are blatantly encouraging log traffic. They are saying that road is open to any logging traffic. It is. It is. It's 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 and that's that's the point. So logging traffic is okay. Logging traffic is a traditional use in Vermont. It's always been okay to be logged log to log. That road has always been open. Well, the water is pretty respectful. Hmm. Well, the waters when well, they're driving, most of them, not all of them, but most of them have been very respectful over the years. They don't yeah. drive when the kids are on the road. They, they, they'll stop. They stop up by your place and wait. You're talking about the waters. Yeah. The waters. They're, they're, they're regulated for, for erosion. They were actually blocking the road and accepting penalties to, to save, keep to save trucks the road. from going in there and ruining the road for the bigger trucks, for their logging trucks. Right. So well, if we're let's, also talking let's, about safety on the yes. road, let's talk about pedestrian traffic. I walk my dog on Herring Brook Road every morning and typically every afternoon. I have almost been hit multiple times by multiple different people on that road. Multiple times. If we want to talk about safety on the roads, there was a person riding her horse on Ward Brook who was hit by a vehicle in the corners right so so and we're not talking about any other traffic besides people driving on the road right so why increase we should not be increasing traffic. i'm more worried about getting hit by somebody driving to work in the morning walking my dog on herring brook than i am about getting hit by someone on their atv and so, is statistically the most dangerous vehicle on the road that's just statistically they, they aren't designed for safety and speed on a Hard pack service. They're dangerous. Road cars are have safety regulations that they have to meet. ATVs don't meet them for the conditions that you find on a hard pack traffic road. All right. Well, what if if, if someone were to come to you and say, um, you know? We have a way of um, basically slowing down the amount of uh, ATV use um, and damages and so on and so forth. Is that something to be in favor of? No, I don't believe it. Nobody's done anything for the past. Well, that's because I had, that's because we've never had anything at all. Right. I mean, with with anything, there's pros and cons. Sure. And and right now, it's a bad situation. Will 
what, so what we want to do is if, if in fact uh, an ordinance does come to pass, what we want to do is to make sure that it's designed so that we reduce the amount of misuse. I and and I think that, that's what Ray and Callie have been working on. Right. I would suggest that before you do anything to say allow for out there, there's plenty of state law already that ought to just be enforced. And you don't need an ordinance to have a, law, a certified law enforcement officer go out there and ticket people for not being registered. You should be registered and you're supposed to carry insurance. Then get some law enforcement time out there and start ticketing people for no registration and lack of insurance. And if we call, if I call up and say there's a couple of dirt bikes out here racing back and forth on the road, can you come? Somebody's got to come out. Somebody has, I think if you need to have a presence out there so people real the bad actors realize you can't do this out here. Right. And we will watch. And I think before you ever even think about opening up the road and maybe doing something, we need to see the enforcement out there happening now. And it has to be part of, it would have to be part of the ordinance. You decided two years, we're not going to budget for that anymore. You guys are, you're on your own over there. And then you take the budget away and we're overwhelmed with all this traffic. And I still have to go back to the town plan has, almost half this town is preserved to protect it. And you're talking about passing an ordinance that's going to create a pretty big development impact on that area. And you can, you're thinking of like, right, I think you're like thinking maybe it's not development because nobody's building anything. But the effect is, Without even building anything, you could have a huge impact on the environment over there by bringing in crowds of ATVs on the weekends. Well, that, um, I, that's why I disagree that there will be more crowds. Like I, what I'm seeing now is a lot of friends of friends, like the central Vermont area. I think coming up to this loop. I mean, the loop is seven miles. It's not that great a trail. I mean, uh, you know, true ATVers years want to go 50 miles, you know, make a big loop. There's also Hong Kong, which is another There's all kinds of trails. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Hong Kong is another, there's the loop, which is its own problem. Yeah. Then there's Hong Kong, which is another problem. Yeah. But what we saw the last time, and then it's like, yeah, it was like some kind of interim. It didn't really get passed. We had people coming from Rutland coming all the way from Rutland with several vehicles, and they destroyed the trail through our property. But to, to respond to your question, I'd be interested in what kind of process uh, with community involvement the ordinance would go through. Because our impression from the, my impression from the minutes is that it would kind of be voted on here and, and so, to come to the law is, is to, to get more input. Yeah, but we haven't, we haven't gotten to that stage. No, no, we're not even close. Yeah, we're close to that. I, I, I was hoping that at least get this discussion going and perhaps uh, at town meeting we could even have a non binding refer referendum, whatever, a vote, just see how much interest there is. And if the, if, if it's true that the more town residents really don't want this in any way, then I'm fine with that. But you know, I, I think, again, I'm only doing this because I, I see a real problem with people going by my house and somebody's going to get hurt right on Jonesbrook Road. Right, and the first thing to do and, to take care of that is to get law enforcement. But you know, you, like you said, you can call down there well, what am I going to say? There's no, there's no plates to report. I don't know who these people are. I've tried, I have tried to follow some in my truck at nighttime, and they're gone. I, I, I have no. We had guys go by on, on motorcycles, did a wheelie from my house all the way down to Ward Brook. Right. Two of them. So it's like allowing. <laughs> what well, our position is just allowing and putting it out to the public. 
come on down is going to make that worse. Yeah, you've got that's not the. You've got to solve the law enforcement first. I would disagree that being someone who's ridden on VASA trails. Most of the people who ride on those trails, again, as Ray said, they want to be over in Northfield with the miles and miles of trails, systems that are out there. That's, that's where they want to be. And the people who you are attracting are the people who are taking their kids out and they're side by side. They're being respectful. Mm -hmm. They're following everything. The people who are with VASA are. I've ridden VASA trails in Northfield and in Sheffield. The, the issue of VASA trails and the opening of public roads to VASA are two we different should. issues. And I think Washington would love to have access to the Memorial Trails through Moortown Duster on public roads. We should not be turning public roads over to a private organization. Public property. It's not public property, it's a public right of way. And it's a right of way through our property. So you're turning over, it's almost like you're turning some of the supervision or whatever of that property, which is really ours, and you've got a right of way, and you're turning that over to a private organization who has a conflict of interest with actually the property owner's interest, and maybe even the town interest. VASA wouldn't really be able to do anything. Uh, off of Herringbrook anyway, because that is owned by Fountain, and I can say with pretty confidence that Fountain would not allow that. So it would so literally that, just why, be the uh, road. Okay. Wait, why were you saying to bring VASA in to do? It was what? suggested by the state police to connect with VASA. Well, because they have that opportunity. They don't have. They have some of the connections. They can make different connections. There are other ways. Instead so of going that still, way, there are other it ways still to go. It goes back to we shouldn't be turning public, the, our public rights of way over to a private organization. And VASA is far from a disinterested party giving you advice. Yeah. They want access to your roads. It's the Fox watching. I, I thought the state police right. said that VASA was. That they, VASA can't connect with anything in Moortown anyway, because to get from Moortown to the VASA trails in Northfield, you have to go through the, vine, the winery. And the winery said no. So VASA really doesn't want anything to do with us, but they could be a resource in helping with some of those. It, it, I thought they said they could help with enforcement, but VASA... They and they have enforcement, enforcement on their trails. I, I don't know what they do for enforcement. But. What's good about VASA on private property is that a private landowner can just put some folks. They want them to stop itself. It stops the next day. With a public road, it would take, once they have access, if something untoward happens or you want to change your mind, it would take years. Yeah. We won't get it back. Yeah. It took a long time to, to have it actually kind of tamped down a little bit. Uh, what you really need is enforcement. The problem that's out there now needs enforcement. Whether it's the state or the town, somebody has to come up with the money. And that's all I think. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I think we all agree with that. So we could budget money for, to hire a sheriff to get up there well, or something. But well, they do it. You know, we can budget all the money we, we want. But if they say yeah. they don't, they don't they have, they have they money, do they don't have the people. Now, right. So. I think it really is. Um, we should have one of our legislators here, but it's becoming more of. I don't think it should really be on the town because we have people coming out. We have people coming from other towns. So you've got a population in this town of. I'm not sure how many, um, paying their taxes. And now we have to provide law enforcement for people coming from Montpelier, Barrie, Northfield, or wherever, and cover their bad behavior. And how much are they coming to Moortown? I don't know if you see these people, but how much are they coming to Moortown? Because there is no law enforcement here. They're not on the VASA trails because they don't want to behave on the VASA trails. So they come where they don't have to be paid, because there is no law enforcement. And, but Moortown's not the only town. Then Moortown's not the only town. I think like I think other states they actually have more of a county government where I'm not sure maybe they they run things more at a county level. Um, I actually think Vermont needs to think differently about how they provide law enforcement overall.
and not leave it to individual small towns. It should be at a higher level. Uh, you know, uh, everything we, you know, sorry. Yeah, every, everything in your letters, you know, everything that you're saying, you know, we agree with. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, but we're, we're looking at different possibilities for, you know, how are we going to fix this problem? That's and all and we've, we've been discussing about law enforcement, not just, not just for ATVs and right. so on, but for everybody. For everybody. Right. Oh, no. You know, it's, I mean, it's, that, a it's just, it's just, it's a terrible problem. What happened in the past is we did have somebody and we basically, we had a, a sheriff 10 hours a week under contract and we ended up losing money on it. We were paying out more, you know, to hire them mm -hmm. than any fees that they were collecting. And, you know, it's just, and it's even worse now. And it's, it's worse with the state police. So what do you see as the problem? The problem in terms of? You're saying the problem is, is worse now. I think they're understaffed. What, they're understaffed. Yeah, I'm talking about, yes, yeah, right, I was talking about the sheriff department. Yeah, so they're, they're understaffed, the same with the state police. Mm -hmm. Understaffed before COVID, but it got worse because of COVID, as far as the amount of staffing. And yes, yeah, the same right. Right. it seems like positions are right. right, but you know it was understaffed even before that. You know, yeah. so I, I think I even called them during COVID. But you know, so before that, I could call and no, nope, we'll put it in the database, but we're not going out there. They only this is terrible, but um, and I'm sorry, you it, but it's like they only come out for dead bodies. It's the only time I've ever seen the state police out there. Not quite sure. I've seen them. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen plenty of them out there. So, so maybe you're on the job. I've seen them once or twice. I haven't, I rarely see them. But, and I, that's what I feel like. They're not going to respond until I call them up because they got, got another dead person. Right right in front of my house. Mm -hmm. Who was the guy? Hmm? They were doing the same thing with the motorcycle and the truck. And what I was called that? them every week. I called like, yeah. a month later and turned out to be one of the same guys. You're kidding. And uh, the state police came and got It's the only time I've seen them actually yeah. show up. But. So uh, I think it's just, this is just a, the beginning of a discussion that, you know, it's, there's no, nothing in written, yeah, so nothing's been decided. I have that, you know, one thing that's different but along the same topic. A few years ago, I was about 10 years ago now, one of the culverts washed out. Um, and it was just past Bob Grace's place when those culverts washed out. And there was no traffic <laughs> for like three months. And then they fixed the culverts. You know, if you, yeah. if, even if there was just one gate on the road. Yeah. The fact that it's a loop makes it very It's nice. a racetrack. One right. gate it's a race track. would make it so that everybody has access to their property. And it's not a loop. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was, it was like three months, one summer. What, do you remember that day when the culvert was out? Just yeah, out and I thought, you know, uh, thought about the gate several times. I just, yeah. I don't think it would work because I think eventually people would put trails around them. You have to find a way to make it work, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, but I've, got, I've um, uh, after seeing some of the things that go on, We've talked about even gating from December, during mud season particularly, uh, December to you know May 1st or whatever. Uh, and that, I don't think that's completely un un impossible that way. It's a lot to consider when, when you put up a gate. You know, you know, it is a town kind of road yeah. and you know, people like to use them. And who, who do you stop? You know? Well, but the, but the, 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 the one gate. One gate. Yeah. Where? That, that, that's <laughs> your job. Well, okay. One gate would, be, would do the trick of closing the loop while still having access to, yeah. to the entire road. Yeah. Just well, past well, not, I believe that's why I started with the to get past the yeah. gate. Just, just past the gate. that culvert washed out? Fountain yeah, Forestry. Yeah, the out. And they had the rocks there. I mean, that, whenever they put the big rocks there to, uh, because there was so much damage when they were actually logging in there. And that um, didn't work. I, I believe that it was worked in terms of of people uh, going up 
Well, I, I thought up around the loop. Isn't that true, right? People will listen their books out. People get to yeah. people listen their books out. Yeah. 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 This so it was an observation that, that one summer, and it was like 10 years ago, that it was like all sort of like quiet. Like, what's going on? And then I walked up there, like, oh, it's a cold out. Yeah. What a difference. All right, well, there's obviously a lot more that we've got to yeah, discuss on this. I really appreciate you. Sir. But it, it was really good. I was glad to see those letters because we want definitely want input from, from Dallas people. And uh, so we're just going to keep keep talking about it. And you know, we've, we've got to, you're, you're absolutely right, we've got to address with some type of law enforcement everything, all of our roads, trails and so on. And it's, you know, we've just, just got to do this. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Your job is as a select board, and we appreciate that. No, oh, this is the easiest part. Oh. Look, at, <laughs> look how long I've been doing it, you know, so much easier. It's just a little bit of a little bit I think it just gets a little difficult as someone who tries to be responsible, tries to do things. I mean, I know Deb, I've stopped for you before and we've had a conversation so I think you know as someone who's trying to be as responsible and just going through because I mean I have horses I've done a lot you know I know what it's like I know the common sense stuff to do and I think for those of us who are trying to be responsible and do the right thing that we may not do it a hundred percent of the time you know those trying, it's frustrated to then get classified in with the people who aren't. I just think we're, we're not classifying anybody then. I mean, I'll talk to you later. Um, like, oh, I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'd like to talk to you later, like off camera or whatever. But um, we know who the, the same people are and who the really respectful people are. I do too. Are. I can yeah. tell you, I can probably But we also know when you, when you open up that can of worms and we lived through it the last time, and that's why I'm so kind of emotional about it, is that we sure. lived through it the last time. Um, and then lived through, you know, finding the kid in the road and dealing with that, and it didn't have to happen. If it wasn't, you know, um, the wild, wild west out there, that never, it wouldn't have happened. Um, and then seeing that it could happen again for the behavior that's going on out there. So I really feel strongly that if you open it up again, people will come from everywhere. They're going to come from Russia. other states. If you, so, I went to Berlin, New Hampshire is what people often talk about. If you want to ride your ADD, you should go to Berlin, New Hampshire. Yeah. So yeah, I went yeah. to the Berlin, New Hampshire web, their town website. And on the banner of more towns website, they have a picture of the church in the river during the autumn. Yeah. Berlin, New Hampshire has an ADD in, in, the, in the middle of the pond. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. their, their... Is that right? <laughs> we we don't want that in the preserve. No, that's no, the, no, no. Yeah, that's we it. have more town residents who I've talked to who have said, like, we go to New Hampshire just because at that point um, their kids were able to ride, which they are not in the state of Vermont, which I'm perfectly fine if you're under 16, whatever. But that that's where they went because they had trails. They paid their registration to New Hampshire and they trail over there and make a weekend out of it. Okay, well, anyway, we're all on the same team and we want to work together. And uh, so any input, you know, that you want to give at any time, please feel free to do it. We really appreciate it. Not necessarily right now, but it's the. As you develop, uh, 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 as the ordinance gets developed, have, having an idea of what that is going to look like to... Yeah, certainly. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. are you just going to have, do you have a process for what you're doing, or are you just... We're just talking about it right now. Talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So when, like when you develop that, it'd be well, nice to get that out. It's such well. a hot button topic. I think you need to have some kind of working group. That right, and that's a lot of other people. Yeah, that's pretty much what we've yeah. been. Well, as you know, everything we've been doing in town, we yeah. do have committees, and so it would be the same thing here. Uh, you know, it, we haven't really. We've talked about it. Cal and I have talked about it. 
and we're just kind of feeling things out. We really haven't got to the committee stage yet, but you know, maybe that is the next step. You know, um, is this the only? This is really the only area in town where there's ATV use, as far as no, we know. I, I, no, I, 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 you know, I, 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 I just, I'd say it's the time. biggest. This where the, the biggest, wouldn't you say? I don't know. Seventy-five percent of the ATV traffic in town. Is what? I'm just guessing. Oh it's probably seventy-five percent of the ATV traffic in town goes by my house. A lot of the trash we get on our road is from uh, Barry. It's from Barry? Yeah. Yes, I was outside yeah. Barry. Yeah. Central, the Central yeah. Mark. I've been a long time against the traffic, and I've been a rich old You can go and that kind of like chase them out. Oh, that's right. That's how you know what to do. That's how you know You can do chase to Chase Connects. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Oh. Yeah, because if you go by my house and yeah. you go straight, you will end up in Riverton. It's oh, not right. a great road, right. but I wouldn't right. recommend right. it with a car. You're going outside of the one town, or you're just staying right in the town? <laughs> <laughs> You've never been outside of one town? What's that? You've never been outside of one town? No, you can't. You've gone over the Chase Road there and come into Riverton? I, of course I've been there. Yeah, I was giving you a hard time. I know. Okay. I don't uh, love one town that much, so I stay here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We get some other stuff we got to take. Yeah, this is work done. All right, well, again, thanks for coming in and writing the letters. Really appreciate it. Thanks for all you guys do. Okay. Thank God you're willing to sit. That's all we've got to do. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to listen to it since we're already here. No, it's fine. It's great. See you, Steve. Carly, do you have something for public comment? No, she's here for the oh, library. Oh, oh, the library. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Joe's not coming in. Um, the garage, why don't, we, why don't we skip down to town hall if that's okay? Yeah, no, that's no. all right. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. now that's, that's your bailout. Well, I thought that there would be some more folks here from the committee, but... Uh, Kyle and I are here to hold the fort. Um, basically, we just wanted to give the board an update uh, because we wanted to uh, have some community engagement at Moorfest. And so we originally thought we would do something actually at the town hall as well as Moorfest, but we decided that it should just be at Moorfest because people aren't going to want to uh, go over to the town hall. I mean, there's only a short window of time there. And so rather than uh, what we thought is in the future we would have some, um, we could do some layout and show people what some, of, I'm gonna get into that in a minute about what some of the things that need to happen and possibilities and invite all the various committees in town and invite townspeople to come and, and see some physical marks mm -hmm. on the floor and, and this elders making some posters to show some design stuff. So um, that's one of the updates that we're trying to have that sort of some, some boards and some uh, an area at the Moorfest where people can come and hear what's going on and also give some input and some, some thoughts of what they would like to see or whatever, because nothing is certainly in stone. The other update to, to let you know about is that one by um, hiring Bill Gallup, uh, who did the ADA and life safety assessment, if we just do that and we don't do anything per se with the library, you know, going forward, he, his, uh, and I don't know if anybody's had a chance to review what I sent you, that he, the documents he created, but basically um, the building, the present lift does not meet ADA right. code. So Bill came up with an idea uh, design idea that we're going to show at Moorfest and uh, try to, you know, would be incorporated into future use of the town hall. Again, this would be just to use the town hall. And the library is, again, another part of that. I mean, it's important. Um, so anyways, there's, the, there's a lift that would be from the basement, access from around back. I, I mean, I won't take the time to we could roll through the drawings right now, but again, I encourage you to look at that email. And then that lift 
which we're going to show, this will be in the display, that lift goes to the first floor and then it goes to the stage. So then that, what that lift is doing is eliminating the need that we've spent a lot of time thinking about, oh, there needed to be a ramp to get up to the stage and how much room would that ramp take and the seating for parties and meetings and alike and such. So, um, that was, so that was one of the things that are identified that we could do. These are the things to keep our town hall so that we're ready for two, 2034, I believe it is, when it's 200 years old. So we need to, we don't have that much time. 2034 is going to be here soon to, for the 200th birthday. <laughs> the other thing is that um, we'll need to really do, the water is still coming into the basement. The, the thing by the side door with the grate and everything, I mean, Mark is cleaning that out three or four times a, a summer. Yeah. Um, so part of the, the, the town hall project would be hiring an engineer and really doing a, a, a mitigation on how we can deal with the water in the, in the basement. So it would be the lift, the mitigation, there's some fire code items for the ceiling and the basement, there's some exit hardware that needs to be done. And, and then again, just the basic building maintenance. So that's just part A phase would be just, that's the given the library go somewhere else. Okay. Then what we're also going to show is um, how the library could look in the town hall, how it could function moving forward in years to come, you know, so that's what part of that display will be. Uh, and then just another side little thing is that we, we were also thinking that we would need a fire protection sprinkler system, but, and I don't, I won't break that letter out, but we don't need one as long as we work on a few, few other fire code issues in the basement in terms of the ceiling and the separation, but based on the number of people that occupy the building, we wouldn't need to add a sprinkler system, which is pretty good, though, although we might want to, if we invest money into and wanting our building to make it to not only 2035, but to make it to 2135. I mean, whatever, you know, we, we saw what happened to the church in Middlesex, so we might want to consider Sprinkler. Um, so, I think that's, that's pretty much where we are right now. I think uh, the next step of, of showing people in the community what we've come up with and how uh, the, the phase one and then the library phase of keeping the library there, how that could all function. And I think what would be important to really is another piece of that is that with it becoming more, you know, a whole community center because of some of the other visions of not just the library, utilizing the basement, fixing up the basement, which we're going to try to show and have people give their input, where we could have classes and people could meet there. And is a, any use you could think of, you know, we could have a, the ATV meetings could be there in the basement when we get it fixed up, you know. Um, but in any event, uh, so that's, uh, we're going to show what some of those, we've had a lot of input early from community members of what they'd like to see there. So that will be part of the, the more fest display, so to speak. And then also to see what other people think, or maybe some other people think, Let, let's not do anything. But any, not doing anything isn't the answer. We would, I would think we would at least need to do that phase one type of work, just to... So... Uh... I didn't read all your document, John, Don, but the, how is the elevator we have now of non-compliant? Is the width? It's the width, the fact that you need a key to get into it. You know, it's not a push button kind of operation. You right. have to go find someone out. Uh, but mainly it's the width. I could read you the yeah. sections of the... Yeah. No, I, it's just it's I don't, non-compliant. I put it in. Yeah. We were in I'm sure we were in compliance. Yeah. But that was, you know, way back. Right. And even yeah, the report that we just got from VLCT 
we have a problem with with it, the way it is right now, with the way the grade is coming into the right, into right. the sidewalk right. and stuff. Yeah. But they just noted in that. But so basically, um, the elevator would move back towards the back of the building. Yeah, it would come. I mean, I'd love to show you the drawings. Yeah, right now, but, but we yeah, won't take the, kind of where the steps are. Yeah, right you now. know, and, and I've even talked with Johnny Summers because you know he has access to his apartments back there. But there would be two handicapped spaces created back there, you know, kind of where the fuel tank is, though I think we could relocate that fuel tank. Oh, yeah. It still showed where it is, but there'd be two handicapped spaces there, a sidewalk, and you'd go in and there'd be a slight ramp because the grade is lower there. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know where the old post office is right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's basically where the elevator would be. Okay. And, you know, we've, We've got some great ideas about how we can utilize it, still the post office in another space in the building mm -hmm. in the basement or something. That it's not going to be discarded yeah. or anything. Yeah. And there's you know talk of some upgrades to the kitchen and stuff like that. But you know, uh, so uh, you know, come you'll see us at More Fest. Hopefully not just. Tyler and I, but some of our other committee members, but, you know, uh, yeah. no, they will be, you know, we're meeting again on the 9th, you're always welcome to drop in, and uh, we'll carry on, you know, and, and keep keep you guys updated to what we're, you know. One of the, well, the last thing, and then so we can move on, is that we've, um, it, the, we, and this board has also talked about it, and talked about it the last time I was on the board, whatever number of years ago, was, you know, town meeting is, we all love having town meeting there. Presently the way it is because of the ADA access is a problem. But we've been trying to look into and see about the, the thing about voting, you know, there's an issue about voting on the stage, the regulation, you know, about the distance and people walking by to the bathroom and all that, and whether we go back to the school. So. Uh, I don't believe that the, the lift will make it so that people have access to the stage, but I'm not sure how we can address that, you know, that voting issue, because it's more right. than just the, the ADA access, right. it's, it's also the, the actual physical space. Right. You know, so I don't know, that's, that's another discussion. Okay. Well. Yeah, once again, I mean, you know, I've had people say to me, let's just, you know, why don't we just build a new town hall and then we can deal with all these issues. So sleep on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, anyways. Well, thank you, Don. Thank yep, you, Carl, you for, for the work that you're doing. We do. We'll see you Thursday? Yes. Okay, great. And just keep us informed as you're yep, we'll keep going. Okay. We'll keep going. That's terrific. Anything else on that? Anybody? Okay. So, um, going back up, I don't see that this, we pretty much had the dis discussion at the, site, at the site visit, so. Yeah, we're good. Uh, I'll uh, get together with Sasha on that. Um, and Joe's not here, and then, um, oh, the RFP. <clears throat> Only one. Yeah. That's yeah, more on. Uh, yeah, more on electrical. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Okay. I'm wondering if it's the timeline, but we aren't gonna. We're gonna lose the money if we don't do it this calendar year, right? Right. We have to do it by December. Okay. But the, so the electrical is could be done separate to the. Though we should try to do the the moisture vapor barrier thing if we can find someone, but the electrical. We should try to move forward because there's definitely some efficiency in Vermont money there. Well, let's see the proposal. It's right under your proposal. I think it's right in front of you, right? Because actually, they, they need the lighting. And uh, you know the, the lighting right. needs to be fixed anyway, so this is an opportunity to fix the lighting. This is town wide appraisal. Oh.
Oh. In front of you. <laughs> you want me to read it? Sure. <clears throat> this is a bid for the, uh, it looks like the electrical improvements to the town garage based on the uh, efficiency Vermont proposal. And uh, it looks like it's uh, replacing uh, all the lights and labor, and the price is $8,495. And he has included attachments uh, detailing the products he plans to use, which we probably are in compliance with efficiency for my book. We'd probably you know, have to check them out to be sure of that. But $8,495, that's the only price we do have. I don't know um, where we are, where we do stand on the funding. Do you have any idea? I was going to look it up, but I think, uh, I think there's like a $4,000 uh, um, credit. Like, yeah, I, I, credit from efficiency Vermont. I'm just going to look it up. Yeah, that right sounds really quick. I think great. that was the number. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I'll give that to you in a second. But, but whether we want, I mean, we could check with Brad uh, from, from Efficiency Vermont whether we could use it all for the electrical or we use some of it for that and then also use some for the fixing that whole uh, moisture and uh, vapor barrier problem in that right front corner. Right. If we use, um, just speaking out loud here, and I don't know all the. Uh, Rules, but I don't know if, it, if it's over 5,000. Do we need to have voter approval or not, John? This is 84.95, but if you take off the discount from Efficiency in Vermont, that put it under $5,000. Right, right. Then we could proceed with the project I, without I, that. I, I'm pretty sure we could. How much? Um, yeah, it is for, for your $4,000 municipal bonus project. Please begin corresponding with me. This is from Brad Long. Because that guy, Paul, left for another job that I was working with. Yeah. All right, Sasha, how are you doing in terms of budget? I can get back to you on that. Okay. As far as that. All right. Where would you want it? Where do you want me to look for it? Well, just uh, what, how yeah. we're doing exactly. year to date. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Oh, and so that answers the question as long as there's money budgeted, you know, and, and we're looking at 4800 or whatever. Yeah, $4,500. Or 4500 Oh, whether we could um, take the Yeah, just, yeah, just do it. I wonder if Martin put something in the budget anyways, because the lighting, he's got lighting out right now. It's kind of dark in there. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, I mean. So I wonder if he, maybe there's something in there that he planned that he was going to need to do some lighting. But I can reach out to Brad and ask okay. him uh, if we can use it for just one item. Just one item. He might yeah. say, well, you know, use it. And then we can start to still, you know, for next year, find a contractor who's going to do that. You know, they got to open the, the eave and rebuild the eave right. and insulate. And maybe that would be the way to go, Don. Yeah. Just yeah. get this part done. Yeah. So we can use up the coupon we have from Green City Vermont. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I guess I would make a motion to go forward with this if we can use that coupon, the $4,000 coupon. Yeah. Sasha, could you send me that uh, quote so I can pull it to Brad? I'll second that. He'll speak. Okay. Please, and then I can. You want to see No, just. Uh, sure. Well, you can, well, I mean, I'll have, I'll get it in an email form, and then I can send it to Brad and have him look at it from Efficiency Vermont and see if it, you know, if it see, works. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meets the criteria. Yeah. Okay. But okay. I don't. Yeah. I just don't vote on it now. So yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Any uh, more discussion on that? All in favor of the motion, say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. <laughs>
Okay, thanks. Well, we should stay on that other item, though, because... Yeah, I think... Because it is a... It is a it's only going to get worse. I know. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I'm thinking we'll probably get a lot more response in the winter from contractors. Everybody's yeah. flat out now. Right. No, yeah. for sure. You were mentioning... Uh, EF Wall. EF Wall, because they, they built it, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't get a chance we, to talk to them today. But. Maybe if you reached out to me to say, is it something that you could do this winter or something? Yeah. I don't know. It may be a good winter project. For yeah. Them. Okay, let's uh, move down the list here. We've got uh, reports and communications and options. What do you have there, Sasha? Um. because he has a conflict of interest. So he's referred us to another lawyer, and I assume that you guys want me to go ahead and contact him to get him going on. Yes. yes. Okay. And I heard from Robert Turner, who said that Martin and the guys met with him last week, and they're, they're moving forward with it. Okay. So it's good news. Yeah, I, I was funny because I, I had told Joe we're not moving the module up, we're just resetting okay. it. Because I think that was one of the suggestions that Mary had. Yeah, to just, just reset it. Just reset it, okay. And, but I, I'll talk to Joe again. Okay. And then Craig Oshkello, we need to have, um, he'd like to be reappointed to the DRB as alternate. And his it expires this month, so okay, can do that. Uh, let's do it right, right now. I make a motion that we uh, appoint Craig Oshko. Um, I'm sorry. I, DRB alternate. The DRB alternate. That's right. He's an alternate. Okay, as a DRB alternate. Uh, second. Second. And uh, any more discussion? Or any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. okay. Thank you. And with the DRB, uh, John Riley would like to have Greg McGurry <coughs> appointed <coughs> to the regular seat where Eric has left a vacancy. Oh, okay. So, uh, so appoint Greg? Greg McGurry to McGurney. the regular right. seat. Right. So okay. Alternate. Okay. I'll make that motion. <laughs> I'll second it. <clears throat> so Greg McGurney will be uh, a regular member yeah. of the DRB. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Becky um, Alcler sent in her resignation, resi resigned from the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. um, Becky Eau Claire, oh. she's got too much going on and wants to resign from the Finance Review Committee. Okay, I, I make a motion that we accept uh, Becky Eau Claire's resignation from the Finance Review Committee. Second. Any discussion? Well, it's, it's too bad, but and uh, yes. I think we still do have some, some interest from others. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, there was an inquiry about renting the town hall for a couple of hours on a Sunday, once a month for the next like five, six months. And they're going to play their cellos there. Um, the library would need some clarification as to whose responsibility for setup and breakdown and, and cleaning would be. We've been asking people that use it to, you know, wipe down and do some disinfecting, but mm -hmm. we should have something in place for as yeah. we need to set up or yeah. tear down. Yeah. Didn't the cello read that email? Didn't they say they would do that? I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought they too. said they were going to. Okay. I don't know. I thought 
happened, the general people said that they would do cleaning. Do you all know that? I, have yeah, I don't know. I have to look it up again. I can't get with Corey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I'll, I'll try to find it. I have like, while we're doing something else. We, we provide the cleaning stuff, right? And they just utilize it. Is that how it goes? Yeah. yeah. Um, there is two permits over there, one for bliss bar that needs to be approved by everybody. Okay. And then there's a permit for a grant just for you and Tom to sign. Okay. That I just put a sticky note on. Okay. And while we're on the town hall, I had a phone call today. They are planning a rain date for Eric Kittred's celebration of life and wanted to know if the town hall could be utilized for that just for a couple hours, October 2nd. October 2nd? Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's fine with that, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And I looked back and did some digging on Trevor uh, Travis's request that legal trail is indeed number 15, so I just wanted to make sure that you all knew that that was, mm -hmm. that was correct. Okay. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of Chad Barrett to see if he could come in, but he's got a voicemail that's saying he's un unreachable right now, so I'll keep trying on that. And then I have an email from Laura Gans on Route 2, she's got some concern with speed. She's ready to see if there are any plans, or could be plans, to monitor the speed limit along the stretch of Route 2. Just, she's noticed a lot of um, working from home the past year, particularly during construction season, She's had a front row in many occurrences during many occurrences, literally shaking when large trucks speed by. She has a sense that hopefully through the winter it will subside, but she's just got some concerned about it and wondering if something could be done. Okay, so which stretch is that? Route two. Oh, um, yeah, but we're. I would say over toward Gallagher Acres in that area. Yeah. Which is where we've had issues before, and unfortunately we couldn't get the speed limit lowered. You know that there are very few places on that that you can go 50. I, mean, I just find it hard to believe that they that, that traffic study was and the road accurate. Is, the pavement and there the is terrible. so bad. Right, right. If you go 50, you're gonna. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think they are planning on repaving that. They did a section. They did one. They did one section. By the uh, junkyard, they did that section, and then went down the landfill. Whatever. Well, that's not going to slow traffic down. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but they did do a section, and then they did the hill by the. The guy going to the flowers to buy the state oh, garage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then I got an email from Mandy. Um, she's asking if the guys could do mowing to not on Tuesdays or Thursdays. They have classes outside. I think today was just because yesterday was a holiday. But right. I guess it interrupted some of their April classes. Okay. So I, I can certainly send an email to them. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. And then she wants to know about the porta potty. She about the what? The porta potty. Uh huh. Somebody from the rec had spoken to her, and I I personally thought that the rec was doing it, but maybe it's it was the school. I don't know who. I haven't gotten a bill. Do you guys know what the scoop is with the porta potty? No. <laughs> I don't remember talking about it. 
talked about it from Morfest, but yeah. not, not for something that's the genre. I don't remember. Yeah. From, I know about from Morfest, but not. Yeah. I just figured it was the work committee that. Sorry about Tim. All right, I'll get a hold of Steve. And then she had a question on. What should we do if there are trees that are potential hazards in the forest in our outdoor living, learning spaces? Who should we let know and who can we request to do the potential cutting? Well, she would let me know. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, potential cutting, I assume, would be yes. what our road, road crew. Or would the rec committee take any of that on? Or no? No. No. All right. Hold on. Yeah, and that's you. something we, we wouldn't want to oh. happen anyway. <laughs> we'll let her know the colleague then. Yeah. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay. Good. Thank you. Kelly, you have anything? Um, I just talked with the admin lady at the state police today. I also emailed um, BASA just to check in with them mm -hmm. um, and see if they would be willing to maybe come to a meeting and talk about different things because that was the state police's recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I do not hear back from them, I will stop in at Tractor Supply because the president works there. Oh, is that right? Yeah, okay. so I can stop in and see him and then I'll if I win and if I get a response from them, I'll let you know to schedule it. But I wanted to see if that was even something they were open to. Uh, is there anything else? I don't think so. I think that was it. Okay. Other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. Ray? All quiet here. All quiet there. Don? Um, well, I guess I'm never really quiet. But I was wondering, uh, where are we with the owl? I think it's called an owl's nest. Oh, yeah. So there's the owl. invoices in that file to be submitted. Okay. Uh, only because uh, I've had, there was a couple of people who uh, have approached me and they were, they were um, because we don't, there's no clear policy yet on what we're doing about masks and, you know, the state. I, I don't want to, I'm not going there. But in any event, who would, one to attend the meeting or asking if we still had the remote possibility like some other time and i said well we're working on it so i guess i know, guess we're getting there yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay and then something from a, a while ago was um i had asked only because i was curious after reading an article about uh, cyber cyber security and you were going to check in with our yep. IT folks or whatever. Do you have something called Carbonite right now? And he's What's it called? Carbonite. And he's actually working with the LCT in Sherland to make things stronger and better. Yeah, it's great. I mean, just hearing some of the things you hear about that people have been hacked or whatever, right. you know, yeah. ransom, yeah. whatever it is, the ransomware. Whatever's going on, it's pretty, right. pretty crazy. Um, no, and that's that's it. That was town garage sand that we did. So that's that's it for. Okay. And I guess oh well, the traffic. I mean, Joyce is kind of just will circle back I, with us. Joyce, I, I'm, the traffic I'm, timing. I'm, and, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that would yeah, be the case. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, and. Uh, for me, the only thing that uh, I was curious about is I had saw on the news that it was Ryan, is it Ryan Busca? Okay, was killed in an accident. He, and that's happened before. People don't stop at the junction of Route 100 B and 2. Yeah, that happened just a year or two ago. Yeah. Right to that guy's house. Yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how that can happen. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear. You, you know, I, it, it says to slow down at 35, and this is, you know, then there's the stop sign. But you come across come, that bridge. I mean, yeah. People are coming down there doing 60, 70 miles an hour. And right. it's not like he was out of state. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. How they they no. haven't released any kind of you know report I, whether he was no, TWI. I don't or I see see anything now? Did John is is he Willie's younger brother? It's Wade Busca's son. Wade Busca's son. Okay, so that's well, not the same Busca that was did the motorcycle the racing down in the. Okay. Um, well, Will, Willie was the one who did that. Willie Bozak. Oh, Bozak. No, it wasn't you taking it. Oh, oh, that's right. It's yeah. Bozak, not Busca. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, Willie's right down the road right now. Yeah. With a huge dog. What's that? He has a huge dog. Oh, all right, yeah. Really, but okay. Puts his, the dog jumps and puts his paws here and heads up here. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> okay. All right, so. Good night, folks. Good night. Oh, good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's take a look at the minutes of August 17th. Some of the things here Tom is going to check on. So I don't know if you heard anything about um, uh, the um, uh, David Speck who's going to take a look at, or Tom is going to contact David to take a look over at the, um, the junkyard. He got back to me. He has, he'd been out ill for a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, he did. I sent him a reminder, and he said that the fencing has nothing to do with zoning, but the other, he's checking into it, yes. Okay. I just got that email this morning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I think everything else has been brought up. Yeah, I don't imagine Tom got back to you about The county funds for the no. from, from the feds. Okay. No, not yet. Okay. Is that the CD filing? Um. Yes. Right. Right. <clears throat> and does anybody have anything more to add on the CD fiber? Any? Well. So I'm a little concerned with it because as I read through their budgeting, I don't, I mean, they're, it seems like they want a lot more money than what they have access to. Mm -hmm. right. And I'd rather see a plan where we know where all this money is going to come from for this rather than get halfway into this and, and then what do we do? Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see fiber to everybody, but you know, you look at the map and, and uh, a couple of things I noticed is if you look at their town, their fiber map, I mean, this is the Harrybrook Loop, and you know, they're showing camps up there that don't have fiber service, and they never will have fiber service, but they're counting them as potential right. fiber yeah. customers. Yeah. You know what? And that's just the ones I know. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Well know? maybe they, if you think that they just didn't they didn't read they just saw that there was a, a property there, but right. they, once they get into the more fine tuned details of researching properties that are gonna get there's no power to those obviously either. Right. right? Yeah. So their their pricing is based on so many residents, right? Uh, but you, you, think if you reduce that them. residence by 20, then that unit price goes up reciprocally. Right. And I, I don't know, there's just, to me there's some, uh, seems to be a lot of unanswered questions, you know, they, they want you know, two million 
If you take $2 million divided by the 198 homes, it's, it's like $10,000 a house. It seems like a lot of money. Yeah. It seems like there might be a better way to do this, but not, uh, you know, through the existing network systems, like right. Washington Tele uh, Waitsville Telecom or something. Well, they said they are going to work with them once they do their poll survey. I think that's what the poll survey will do. Will identify and answer that question of what they really, what places really are going to be in the system. And it, it, that's to me pretty important that they get a little bit more plan to this rather than just. Yeah, I was I was really surprised at how high the numbers were. So. <clears throat> Anyway, all right. I'm well, sure we'll have another meeting. Yeah, 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 yeah no, we're, we can we're, ask we're, about it some yeah, more. Yeah. Okay. And then a couple things for the minutes. Um, on uh, page three, uh, it says uh, on the uh, third to the last paragraph, John let the SB know that the Waterbury Rec had. Okay, so it's the actually, it's the Waterbury Recreation Department. Uh, summer day camp yeah and they met they were meeting at i, I believe it's saint at the hall at saint leo's <clears throat> yeah i mean it, it's sponsored by the waterbury recreation okay. department <clears throat> and then um Let's see, uh, the poplar tree at the beginning of the driveway here? Yeah. I don't see a poplar tree there. I thought you said poplar. You mean the black cherry, the, the one that's partially you dead? You said something about a tree that was down here. I thought you said poplar. Is it a black cherry instead? Well, it's not, I mean, it's it's not down. I mean, I, I guess I'm... Oh, okay. I'm confused. Okay. I thought you had said that it needed something down there needed attention. Oh, no, no. no? Okay. So let's scratch that. I think at some point we're probably going to want to take the, the mountain ash down. Okay. Before it falls on somebody. Because it, it is it's not very healthy. You're shaking your head in agreement, Callie. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think that could be done. So I guess as as my role as tree warden, if I have one, um, I will contact a martyr on that. Okay, so I would uh, make a motion to approve those minutes uh, with the corrections that I just noted. And I guess the, instead of poplar tree, it would be a mountain ash. <laughs> well, I know that the black cherry, the big cherry tree right in the corner in Eugene's, is, looks like it's on its way out. So I, I wasn't sure if that's what anybody was referring to. <clears throat> Second. Okay. Any more discussion on the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, any other old business we need to address? Anything from the list below or anything else? I put together an RFP from Fletcher Road, the bridge, the Fletcher Road Bridge. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to go over it. Basically, um, we're going to send out the uh, V-Trans inspection report out. We'll send it out to three bridge contractors and try to get some pricing back by the 4th of October. Did you have a thing to send out the mail? I sent it out to you. Oh, no, I sent it to you. Yeah. 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 Right. I just thought of something while I was sitting down here, emails are. Okay. 
But now, what I'll do is I'll email Cheryl tomorrow uh, morning. And see. She's already got the uh, address for parent construction. And probably the only code we will miss that. Yep. And then that'll give us three contractors, and hopefully we'll get three bids. Okay, um, and then we have the um, the RFP for the brand list. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at that? Okay. You okay with everybody? Yep. Uh, I move that we accept the RFP for the Town-wide reappraisal. I'll second that. Yeah. Any more discussion on it? Well, I, yeah, I just, besides the current firm that does, is doing our, not our, not reappraisal, but some of our appraisal work, right? The mm -hmm. Yeah, here. yeah. I call and, and what is there, is there, mm -hmm. is there another, I mean, we probably were hoping that his bid will come in and be the one because we've been doing the town for yeah. quite a while. But do we have anybody else to send it to? Is there a. a you gave me one name. The Vickery? Vickery, yeah. They did it, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send them one. Okay. And then there's something MM. I, I know a name of another one, actually. That I could. That I, Someone told me about I could send to you just okay. if you wanted another yeah. another name or maybe it's yeah it's not Vickery it's someone else I, I can send it to Sasha and she'll send it to you guys. Yeah, Vickery did the last one, so that's what I thought. But, but again, I'm not sure if he's doing it or anymore or not. What's the name of the company that's working we're working with now again? Nimrick. Nimrick. Nimrick, sorry. Okay, then all in favor of the um, RFP say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any other old business? How about new business? Okay, good. Let's, let's uh, sign away here. So I've got an uh, invoice for approval, uh, a Nimrick invoice. So I'll sign that. Here is the purchase order for the Owl, total of $999. And we voted that that was okay, so I assume I can sign that. Yeah, won't well, we eventually be able to put that uh, with the recovery funds? Or, I think yeah. so. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I know that's what other, some other tenants have been able to do, so I hope so.
Sparks Plumbing and Heating, an invoice for $640. The, uh, the, toilet, the toilet seat and so on, the lavatory uh, faucet. $1,232.48 uh, from uh, William Gallup Architecture and Planning LLC for his uh, consulting services. So everybody's okay with that? You okay with that? Yep. We, we got a preservation trust that we got $500 from them. So. Good. Oh, there's a 10 right here. Very good. Have I signed everything? I wasn't worthy to sign the man. Well, I don't need to sign that file. Right? No, you don't need to sign that file. The, the file John has to sign anyway, right? Uh, just the liquor license. Right? Yep, yep, yes. Well, you didn't sign this one here, John. Sign this one. Okay. Uh, okay. I wasn't looking in the right place. So, for my ALT, a state highway access and work permit. This is for uh, uh, Bliss Farm, isn't it? Yes. Yes. For their functions up uh, Jordan oh, yeah. Dan, Dan and Trout. Who's going to get a beer, beer tent and more place in there? Yep, it sure is. That's a 20... 25th. 25th. Four to seven. Four to seven? Well, four to, like the fireworks are like at 7.30. I think it's something like that. Right, it starts at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Short and sweet, I guess. No, no, I think that's good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. No, it's yeah, going to no, be good. good. Yeah. Yeah. I went to one of the meetings the other day. It's coming together. Yeah. Okay, very good. Anything else from anybody? Yeah. I think I'll motion to do it for Jared. Second? Go ahead. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. 